In the last video, we talked about the find command. One of the last things we looked at was the exec action, which allows you to run a command for each file or directory that's found. I hinted that there's another more powerful way to do the same thing, and that's exargs. Exargs is a tool that runs a command against every line of input in its standard input. To see what that means, let's start by running the find command. So we'll run find dot for the current directory dash type f for files. In the last video, we used the exec action to run sha1 sum against every file. And it looked like this. We added dash exec sha1 sum, opening and a closing curly brace for the file name, and then an escaped semicolon. Now, if we wanted to do the same thing with exargs, it would look like this. We have the same find dot type f, but then we use this character here, the pipe character, exargs space sha1 sum. Now, every command has an input stream called standard input and an output stream called standard output. By default, both are attached to your terminal. So things you type go into the standard input and the things the command outputs are printed in the terminal. You can attach the output of one command to the input of another command by using the pipe character. And that's exactly what we just did. Take the output of the find command and pipe it into the input of exargs. Now, there's a bit of a gotcha to be aware of, particularly when using exargs in conjunction with the find command. And that's that file names can have spaces in them. So let's make a copy of one of our video files and put a space in the name to see what happens. So we'll run cp example2.log to example3.log, except this time with a space in the file name. And then run our same exargs command as before. Now, that error at the bottom means something didn't quite work as intended. It failed to find a file called example, and it also failed to find a file called 3.org. Now, this is because Exarchs couldn't tell that was supposed to be all one file name, and it treated it as two separate file names instead. To fix that, we can use the dash print zero flag on our find command to make it put a special character called a null byte between file names instead of a new line character. Then we provide the dash zero flag to Exarchs so it knows to use the null byte as a separator. So we would instead run find dot type f dash print zero pipe two exargs dash zero sha one sum. I'm going to guess that most of you find yourself with a need to get sha one hashes of all your video files pretty rarely. So let's move over to something a little more useful. In this file, I have a few domain names and I'd quite like to look up the IP addresses that they all resolve to. The IP address a domain points to is stored in a thing called an A record, and you can look that up using the host command like this, host dash T for type A for A record, and then the domain name. So let's try and do that using exarchs. So we'll run cap host names, type two exarchs, host dash T A. Now, it seems to be doing something. It's taking a little while. Ah, well, that didn't quite go as planned. We got a network error. It turns out that's because exargs is providing every line of input to the host command all at once. For the sha1 sum command, that worked fine because it can accept multiple file names at once. For the host command though, the second argument is actually the optional address of a DNS server to use instead of the default. can fix this using the dash n flag to tell exargs to only provide one line of input to the host command at a time. What if we wanted to provide that custom DNS server option though? Exargs provides a way to do that and it looks like this. We'll cap the host names into exargs again, dash capital I, an opening and a closing curly brace, host dash T, A, another opening and closing curly brace, and then the DNS server that we want to use. The dash I flag lets us specify a placeholder to control where to put the line of input in the command. 
Here, I've used an opening and closing curly brace because it's unlikely to appear in the command otherwise, and it matches the placeholder used by the find command's exec action, so it looks familiar. Note that we didn't have to specify dash n1 this time, and that's because using dash i to set a placeholder implies that only one line of input will be given to the host command at a time. Let's say we have a lot of domains we want to resolve, or maybe the command we want to run just takes a lot of time. Modern computers have multiple CPU cores, so it'd be great if we could use those to run multiple commands in parallel. The dash p flag lets us do just that. So let's run the same command as before, but this time use the dash p flag. So we'll cap hostnames into xargs dash capital I braces dash capital P four to run four commands at once host dash T A curly braces and the DNS server. Now here four host commands will run at once, making the whole thing much faster. This command has a lot of extra output. We don't really care about that. So let's try and clean that up next. Looking at the output, we can see that what we really want is only the last line of output from each command. The part that says example.net has address 93.184, etc. We talked a bit about piping the output of one command into another earlier. One of the really useful tools you can pipe things into is the tail command. The tail command outputs just the end of the input that it's given, and we can use the dash n flag to determine how many lines it outputs. So for example, we might use it to output only the last two lines of our hostnames file. We'd run cat hostnames pipe to tail dash n two. Let's try running our xargs command again, but this time we'll pipe it into tail dash n one. Oh, that didn't quite work. We did only get one line of output, but what we wanted was one line of output for each of the four commands that xargs ran. The problem is, piping one command into another is a feature of the shell, and our shell doesn't know that we want the tail-n1 part to belong to the command xargs is running, rather than the overall command that we are running. Now, because pipes are a shell feature, the way to fix this is actually to have xargs run a shell itself. A shell is just a command like any other, it can be run from the terminal, and it has flags that control its behavior. You can run that sh shell and give it a command to run with the dash c flag. So we could run sh dash c, and then in quotes, the command we want to run. For example, cat house names, piped to tail dash n2. Now, in this case, that's not really any different to running the same command directly in our terminal. But it does let us solve our problem. So we could run cat house names, two xargs, capital I and the braces, dash P4 for parallelism, and run sh dash C with some quotes. And in the quotes, we put our host dash T, A, the curly braces, the DNS server we want to use, and the pipe to dash tail N1. So now we finally get the output we were looking for. Now, that trick of having xargs run commands with sh-c is something I use fairly often. But when things get even more complicated, I tend to reach for a while loop. And that is what we're going to talk about in the next video. Thanks for watching.